what time it is. That's right. It's time for everybody's favorite post podcast show. It's Dinkin' Around with Eddie and Webby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're back. We're back. We're back. It's Dinkin' Around, which means this is raw, unscripted. We're going to use cuss words like poop. It might even use the F word like fart. <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> You never you know, know what thing you never know. Webby. Yeah. You never know what words are going to come out of our mouth. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so as we've talked about in the past few episodes, I'm on this hard seltzer kick for a number of reasons. Number one, I like them. Number two, they have less calories, less carbs. Um, you know, so I'm enjoying them. And so far, Henry's is still at the top of my list. Um, I had last nice. time Bone and Viv, Bon and Viv, I don't know. Before that, I had Truly, and still at the top of my list after competing against those two, but I have another brand tonight called Crook and Marker, which is organic. Ooh, fancy. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, and it has eight less calories, but a few more carbs, same alcohol content. Um. A little bit more expensive because it's organic, but I'm excited to try it out and see how it compares because it's going to be hard to top my Henry's. I'm definitely digging those. Yeah. I'm very curious to see how that turns out for you. I'm going to crack open another one of these from New Holland, the Concord Grape Sour Ink Goza. So do you remember, remember last summer we were in Grand Rapids, we reviewed a sour from New Holland. It was like a like a honey ginger and that yes, was part I of the sour ink series. So it's the same it was. series. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good. Same series, just different flavor. Oh my God, dude. What, what beverage that we reviewed does this remind you of right here? Oh man, that resembles a little bit of uh something that r- rhymes with s'more schmoko. <laughs> <Shmore shmoko. laughs> yeah. This looks like the, uh, watermelon for loco that we, reviewed last summer that people thought we were seriously reviewing but it was kind of a joke but eh. oh well all right well cheers my friend mm. one cheers. thing i love about the show like i, I feel like it, it resembles the old days of the eddie and webby show when we had no idea what we were doing and just drank beer and bs the whole time it's still pretty much the podcast, although we just have like mm-hmm. cooler people than us to yeah. BS with. Yeah, we're always joined by like very cool people, so it makes it seem like we we know what we're doing because yeah. they have awesome content to talk about. Mm-hmm. That's right, man. So many topics, um, so many things to talk about, and hopefully we'll be able to get that guest you were talking about on. But in the meantime, you know what I'm I'm doing this weekend. Webby. What's that? So I've kind of heard about this concept of, um, hold on one second. I got to get Webby something here. Sorry guys. I blew it. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, I I can just tell what Eddie is about to say. It's going to be so damn cool. It's going to be so awesome. Cannot wait to hear what it's going to be. And right now I am uh, just killing time while he sends me something that I need in order for our guest to connect with us. And I think he's good. So Eddie, what were you about to say? Yeah. So it's a concept that I've heard of. And, um, so basically here's how it goes. Sometimes I feel like with modern technology, we are, we're way too available. We, you know, it's like, we got to check our email to see what's going on. We have to check our social media and especially with Eddie and Webby stuff, it's a hobby, but it's also kind of like work, right? So, I feel like I'm constantly, you know, getting notifications and checking this site for this and checking this social media and doing this and that. Right. And it's just like this constant thing. So I'm Mm going to do 24 hours of basically not having my cell phone on at all this weekend or maybe, maybe have it on, but just set it to like, uh, emergency mode, something like that. But it's just, I'm, I'm going to not check it for 24 straight hours interesting that should be a fun experience yep 
it'll be like a little little detox. Um, hopefully, it'll let me kind of get centered and with the become one with the universe again. Get out of that constant bing 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 going on in your brain all the time. So I'm excited to see yeah what that's going to turn into. And the best part is is that I'm going to culminate that by heading up to Punta Gorda to play some pickleball at the Pickleplex on Sunday with oh um, nice with, with our mutual friend Mark and some other people. Very nice. Yeah. Man, that Pickleplex place looks very nice. I've seen pictures. I've seen mm-hmm. video. That looks like a, a very nice facility. Yeah. If anybody that is listening right now, um, if you guys are interested in playing Sunday, I think we're going to meet there around 11. So far, I think we only have about four people that are confirmed. But yeah, if you're in that like, you know, three, five to four, five range or or better, if you don't mind playing down a little bit, uh, let us know. Reach out to me and uh, we'll, you know, we'll get you in. Just do it before Saturday morning because once Saturday morning comes around, <laughs> I'm not checking my phone. So you have... Yeah, like another 36 hours and then boom. So that'll be a, a good time. I'm excited about it. Yeah, that that would be very tough for me to do. I'm I'm a very connected individual, probably too connected at some points. But uh, yeah, I feel like I would probably go through withdrawal if I didn't uh, didn't have my phone to keep me occupied. It is funny because you you will you'll be like, hey, did you see this on Facebook or did you see that on Facebook? You're constantly sending me things, and I'm just like. No, man, I definitely did not see that. So I feel like I'm already better than average, but still, it's like, it's getting to be too much. Yeah, I would say you're definitely better than average because I, I always assume that you only check your messages when you log into AOL at your uh, at your desk because it takes so long to get responses sometimes. But uh, I've got kids though, so I'm used to like everything, just always the responses immediately and yeah. checking in on things and stuff. So um, connected at all times, always want to know what's going on and stuff. But I think that could definitely be a very refreshing thing, though, to go 24 hours without that kind of stuff. That's uh, that's cool. It's a good good thing to try. I think, dude. Uh, what's going on with you, man? Anything new? Oh man, I've got some uh, some great updates to talk about. Last weekend, I experienced uh, an, a totally awesome and amazing pickleball event. And it's actually kind of like a, it was like a dream come true scenario. A lot of people that have tuned into the show for the past year, I have made it very clear that one of my goals was to bring pickleball to downtown Detroit. Do you remember that? I do remember that. Yes. Well, two weeks ago, somebody sent me a message uh, with a Facebook event. And what it was, was for free pickleball right in the middle of downtown Detroit. They were taking Cadillac Square and setting up pickleball courts. And for three hours, it was open to the public to come check out pickleball. And when I learned about that, I was like, oh, hell yeah. This is exactly what I've been pushing for. In fact, I, the people that I've contacted and had meetings with, this was one of the ideas I had. And part of me wondered, like, was this because of me that this happened? Like I was like starting to feel real proud and stuff. I was like, did I help make this happen? Um, But then it turns out once I got to the event, it, uh, they, they had no idea that I had pitched the idea or anything. And the people that I had been in communication with, they weren't familiar with. It was just somebody else had the exact same vision that I did. And luckily they knew who to get in contact with to make it happen. And it was amazing. Like for three hours, there were four pickleball courts set up. There was a half court set up for people to do, uh, just like to do dinking and to get the feel for the paddle. Uh, it, was, it was great for people that had never played before. They start on the little little half court, learn how to use the paddle, hit the ball, do some dinking. And then after they get used to that, then they move over to a full court, play a game with some other beginners. Uh, there were people instructing them on how to serve, how to get in the ready position, stuff like that. And then once they were done with that section, they would move to the other court and play actual games with people. And then there was one court that they called the challenge court, and that was for experienced players. And uh, and I actually played with some very, very high-level players, 5.0 players that showed up to the event. And it was just awesome. It was like one of my favorite pickleball events I've been part of so far. Anybody that follows our YouTube channel, uh, you probably saw the video. Or if you haven't yet, check out the YouTube channel. And it's... uh, pickleball in the d pickleball in downtown detroit and man it was so damn cool it was such a great event 
That's great. Yeah. I, I mean, it looked like it was a lot of fun. It was right in what I consider to be, you know, the heart of downtown, right by campus marshes there mm-hmm. in Cadillac Square. So that was pretty yep. cool. Yeah, that was awesome. And uh, what made that day even better is after that three hour time black, because uh, a lot of us, we kind of, we were coaching and giving tips to the people that were brand new. Um, so there, we played some some good competitive games, but after that event ended, we went to Coleman A. Young Park, which was only eight minutes away from downtown Detroit. And uh, a bunch of us, everybody was at least 3.5 skill level. Um, there were a couple of 5.0 players, and we played some awesome high-level pickleball games for a couple hours. So just that whole entire day was such a fun day of pickleball. Like one of one of the most fun pickleball days I've had yet. Okay. Nice. That's and it's uh, crazy. Like a, a whole bunch of people learned how to play pickleball that night too. Uh, because the, when we were in downtown Detroit, the whole bunch of people that were just like walking by, didn't even know about the event. They just saw and heard the pickleballs being hit around and they were like, what is this? I want to try this. So a whole bunch of people heard of, learned about and played pickleball for the very first time in their lives that day. That's so, so cool. cool. Yeah. Especially cause it, it is, it's a very unique sound. You know, I don't know about you, but I think I've like the. Pavlov's dog ringing a bell, right? They salivate. Like, I feel like I've gotten to the point now where if I hear pickleballs off in the distance, it, it creates this emotion and I get all excited. Right. But it is, it's a very unique sound. Yeah. Um, if, if you believe the guy in, uh, Punta Gorda who was trying to get those courts right by his condo taken out, it can cause strokes in some people. So it's a very powerful sound that pickleball hitting the paddle. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I love that sound. Nothing more refreshing, especially when I go to Freedom Park in Canton. That's the place that has infamously had nobody there when I show up in the evenings. Um, But there's nothing more refreshing when I pull up and hear that sound of the pickleballs being whacked. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, love that sound. Love it. Well, that's awesome. Hopefully it comes back and hopefully it's during one of the times where I'm up there for work. I'll be up there again in September. So maybe, uh, yeah, maybe it'll be there then. That'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be very cool. If not, there's uh, some brand new courts in the city of Dearborn, which isn't too far from Detroit. And uh, there are four very nice brand new courts that I have played on a few times now. Oh, is that, are those the ones that the frog throwing incident happened? <laughs> yeah. Is that, yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes, so, for anybody so you, that tuned into the previous yeah. episode of uh, Dinking Around, I talked about how I went to try to play pickleball, and the courts were jam-packed with people not playing pickleball, but instead running around, throwing around a big toy frog and playing keep away or catch or something. Some craziness was going on. <laughs> but you've been back since that whole incident went down? I have. So I went once after that. And it was awesome. There was a, a huge group of us. We did a Facebook event and a whole bunch of great, uh, pretty high-level players showed up and it had a, a, an excellent night of pickleball. And then two weeks later, I went back. Uh, a few people from that group came and uh, we actually encountered the frog throwers again. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> they were back. No. Yep. Were, they were back. Were they throwing the frog? And they were throwing the frog. It's, uh, it's part of this... <laughs> Boot camp training, whatever whatever the hell it was they were doing, they were back. Um, but this time, there was a sign on the outside of the pickleball, like the, the gate, the fenced area, like right by the door to get into it. And it said, these courts are closed every Wednesday from 5 to 6.30 p.m. for boot camp. So now it's like officially closed until 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays for this boot camp group. And... Uh, the funny thing is I I get there and a couple of my buddies were there that they got they got there before me and they were like, hey, uh, looks like we can't use these courts for a little bit. And uh, so I, I go there and I'm like, oh, man, it's these frog throwers again. What the hell is this? And then all of a sudden I see somebody running towards towards me. I'm outside of the fenced area, but I see somebody running towards me and then I recognize them. I'm like, wait a second. That's that's one of our buddies that we play pickleball with. 
oh my god, did like I, did he try to go in there to play pickleball and they're like chasing him out of this place because he was like running as fast yeah. as he could, and then before he gets to the fence, he turns and then he goes to catch the frog. He was playing the frog. He was playing with the frog catchers. He was part of them, and I look and he's wearing this red jersey. Like he he was one of them. Like I thought he was he he was one of our pickleball crew. I guess he got there like 20 minutes before any of us did. And he saw, he saw the people doing the boot camp training and they invited him to, to join him. And he was like, eh, since I can't play pickleball right now, might as well join them. So he, he was in there running around playing keep away with the frog with all the, the boot camp people. That's crazy. <laughs> That's I couldn't hilarious. believe it. Like it, it was the funniest thing I've ever, one of the funniest things I've ever experienced in real life. Cause like it's something you see in a movie or a TV right. show. That's so funny. The, uh, the infamous frog throwers are now getting yeah. pickleballers involved. In yes. Um, but one good thing, they it, it was when I got there, it was like a little bit after 530. And that sign said that they had the thing reserved until 630. And they were very gracious. They saw that we had like a pretty sizable group there to play pickleball. So they, they all agreed to leave the pickleball courts and do do their running around and whatever it is that they're doing outside of the courts. So that was very nice of them. Uh, so I'm not quite as upset with them as I was the first time because the first time they were making fun of me that I even wanted right. to play pickleball <laughs> yeah. at the pickleball courts. The, I still think that's hilarious when she was like, but you're too, you're too young to be playing pickleball. Yeah. yeah, they were bashing me because I'm way too young to play pickleball. What? It's crazy. Well, at, at, least, uh, at least you smooth things over with the frog throwers. Yes. What, but, why uh, a frog, though? Like, what, like... There's so many things you can throw, you know? Right. Yeah, Giant like frog. Like, like there's you can throw a ball. Um, you could throw like a frisbee. frisbee. Yeah. Like yeah, a lot a lot of things. Not sure why they went with a a toy frog, like a big mm-hmm. giant toy frog. I don't know. Very very strange. Um, but anyways, that's uh that's a place we could try playing. <laughs> Dearborn, yep. that's where I was trying to get with this. If uh if it. nothing's going on in Detroit. Yeah, I mean the courts at Canton are always fun too. Freedom Park, I always yeah. enjoy those. Yeah, I love that place. Close to my house too, so I'm always down to go play at Freedom. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to play, and we're doing full court singles, and it's gonna be Eddie versus Webby four, and yes. this is gonna be like WrestleMania six. The winner is not only gonna get the uh the belt, which is right where over here, <laughs> they're also gonna get the signed or autographed Kyle Yates paddle as well. Yes. So actually it will be Eddie and Webby Eddie versus Webby five because five. part four was for the, the Kyle Yates Ooh, paddle, I which nobody that that, knows. Nobody yeah. knows who won that yet. So I'm glad that you don't have it in view. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise it would spoil everything. <laughs> nobody knows who won any of that yet. <laughs> that video will be coming out very soon. I hope so. Part- man. I, I've been wanting to watch that. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm getting close to finishing part three of the Beer City Open series. That should be coming out um, sometime next week, and then shortly after that will be the big Eddie versus Webby part four. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Um, by the way, it looks like our guest tried to join, but had some technical issues. Maybe. Oh no! So I don't know if you wanna follow up with them while I talk about something that was kind of cool. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. So on Sunday, um, Chad and Simone had like social play for a lot of the people who are connected with peak performance pickleball Academy. They had social play up at Benita Springs YMCA. um, And they invited me, which was super cool. Uh, I, I did some, some video for them. But then at the end, I actually got to go and play with and against Simone, which was incredible. Just that experience alone was was super awesome. Yeah, um, I she's, bet she's a lot of fun. Uh, I got some great video of it too that I'll be I'll be putting a little little vloggy vlog episode together with here in the near future. Um, so that was awesome. But what else was cool was we we stopped there and there were five of us there. So four of us were playing the first game and one person sat out and then we rotated the next game. Anyway, well, the cool part was, and we talk about how pickleball is a game that brings all sorts of groups together, right? 
It'll bring all different uh, ages. It'll, you know, whether you're a man or a woman really doesn't, it, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, all different races, ethnicities, backgrounds, all this stuff. And it totally proved to me on the pickleball court at that moment that that is legitimate because I was the only uh, person that was born in America playing on that court. So I had a Brazilian, uh, a Haitian, uh, somebody from Guyana, Guyana. I, I don't know, a Guianian. I don't know what you call them. And somebody from the Philippines, a Filipino and me. And I was like, this is amazing. Like, how cool nice. is it that we have this sport that can bring all of these different backgrounds together where there's not many other things that I feel like would would bring a group like ours together. You know what I'm saying? And so it was. Oh, really, yeah, for sure. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I love that fact. And that's I experienced the same thing when I play in Ann Arbor. Um, sometimes uh, when I play in Flat Rock, like, yeah, like you said, this I play with so many different, like people from so many different walks of life mm-hmm. that uh, I absolutely probably would never experience or like have anything in common with if, if it wasn't for pickleball. And yep. it's, it's awesome. I love it. That's another, yeah. just one of the many amazing and great things about pickleball that I love. Very, very good. Um, what was cool is Simone was, was she would partner up with some of the pros and rotate um, and have a challenge court where people could come and they could throw their paddles down and they could challenge to play against them. Uh, and I have it on video. And I actually think it was against another instructor from Peak Performance. And she just crushed this guy in the nuts with the ball. Just absolutely <laughs> just crushed him with it and it was it was pretty funny people got a good laugh about that that actually reminds me of something else kind of funny that happened to me at the dearborn courts um i got uh i got a nasty nelson against somebody and uh it hit him uh square (laughs) in the uh below the waist region we're in the junk (laughs) square in the junk and it actually like it uh it caused him to uh fall to the ground it was so it was so good, <laughs> but to be honest, it was this one was not intentional. No. I can't take credit for it being an intentional nasty Nelson. Um, I have gotten an intentional nasty Nelson, and I, it felt great, and I loved getting it. Uh, this one, I cannot take credit for it being intentional. It was just a a very shitty serve on my part. Okay, that's pretty funny though. I I can honestly say I've never had a nasty Nelson. I have attempted it twice. And both times, it just completely screwed up, and it didn't hit anywhere near. But anyway, I've never officially had one. I'm kind of, I'm actually kind of disappointed. Yeah, it's it's fun. This like that the one that I did intentionally. It was it was such a good feeling. Um, but I, I've had numerous failed attempts, and that's one of the most embarrassing things to do because it just looks like the worst serve ever if you attempt it and miss the person. Yep. That's pretty funny. How, how many times have you attempted it? Um, I would say I've had three failed attempts and then two that made contact, but mm. only one of them intentional. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, I have uh, yet to yet to successfully get one. I think I will one day. One of these days coming up. It's got to be the right person, right? It's got to be somebody who's a good sport. Like, I don't think I would do it in a tournament. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I no, I wouldn't do it. I think it would have to be somebody that's a good sport. A couple guys I play with in my community <laughs> might be willing to to try against them. So we'll we'll see. I'll give you guys an update <laughs> once it happens. <laughs> Both people that I got the Nasty Nelson on were people I didn't know. So really? I, <laughs> yeah. So luckily, uh, they, weren't, they didn't seem too upset. The, the guy that I hit in the junk wasn't super happy and super what well, he wasn't very thrilled with it but i mean he could tell that it wasn't intentional so i think he, he was uh he was okay <laughs> okay well i hear some noise does that mean we have some success with uh the guest i think we might have a guest out there and i'm just gonna go ahead and bring him on hot are you wait there, a second Scott oh golden what's hello up, the golden up, boy fellas? is back yeah how, how you doing, doing? Man, I can't complain. I'm on the road to another pickleball tournament. 
Nice. Right. You were just uh, you were just out at one last weekend, weren't you? Yeah. So oddly enough, the way the schedule worked out, I was in Alabama. I moved to Florida, where you are, Eddie, mm-hmm. and then went back to Alabama for a tournament last weekend called the Heritage. Flew back, worked this week, and then jumped on a plane, and I'm headed back to Foley, Alabama, to play in the uh, Atlantic South Regional. All right. Nice, man. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, me, me and Nikki Gullowich are playing tomorrow. Okay. All right. That should be good, man. How, how many times have you gotten a chance to play with him so far? Uh, we've played, th- I think, three times. We played three tournaments officially, but there was this one tournament where I booked a hotel right next to the courts, and it, I got to the, I drove through the night, like I left my house at midnight, and I drove through the night, so I got there at like 4 a.m. to the hotel, and we were supposed to play at 10, and uh, or 9, I think it was 9, anyway, my phone died in the middle of the night. And so I did. My alarm didn't go off, and I actually missed the whole bracket. <laughs> oh, oh man, that'd be horrible. Oh uh, no. Yeah. So like they like they were blowing my phone up. So when I finally got my phone on, I had about fifty text messages and a bunch of voice messages from Nikki and his dad and everybody. But it was too late. By the time I <laughs> by the time I woke up, it was like ten thirty. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! All that effort, and then don't even get to play, huh? Yeah, he still gives me a hard time about that, but you know, <laughs> That's bummer. Cool. Yeah. Well, what so time can you- I? Can I? Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, can I tell you guys about something kind of cool that happened to me today? Yeah. Of course. So I uh, was in my living room and uh, I I get the chance to work from home from time to time. So I was working from home and a delivery vehicle pulls up in front of my house and they bring something to my front step that I I was not expecting anything. And I actually have the package right here. Would you guys like to see what was in this package? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah, that looks familiar to me. (laughs) It's actually very cool, and uh, I was very surprised to find this in the package. And what is that? This is the Golden Axe Pickleball Paddle with our buddy Scott Golden on the packaging. What? Coming in hot. (laughs) Can you believe that? Love it, man. That's uh how fast did that sucker get to you guys? Well that's man, I tell you, Scott was like, Hey, uh, what's your what's your mailing address? So gave it to him and then boom, the next day this <laughs> this is on my doorstep. <laughs> I love it. Thank man. you very Monarch much. Monarch does man. not play around. They do not play around with shipping. Those guys <laughs> get that thing out in the air. I guess it it was on the plane with me to like get to you guys. I don't know. Apparently, man, because Mine also arrived today as well. And check out that handsome guy there, man. Nice. Hey. Yeah. Look at that. I love it, man. We I want Webby, should we do like a like a live unboxing and opening <laughs> yeah. of it? Yeah, this is a first for our show. We've never done a live unboxing, but uh let's do it. Yeah, because these are both still in the packaging. Yeah. So while while we're opening it up here, Scott, you want to talk a little bit about this uh golden axe paddle here that we have? Yeah, absolutely. Would love to. So the Golden Axe is something that's been in the works uh, since uh, probably over a year ago is when it started. Uh, I worked closely with Monarch and Riley and Brandon and those guys over there at Monarch up in Pittsburgh. And we, we just worked on creating a paddle that was going to fit my style i'm a very aggressive player by nature so uh it's got the short handle it's got a like a four inch handle um all the specs are actually on the back so you guys might be able to actually read off the specs for us but it's got a one of the things i really like about it it's got a thicker core which is a 9 16 inch core so it's not your standard width it's actually a lot thicker and that came from, uh, I guess, originally from Selkirk. They were the first to kind of do it. Um, 
the amp series or whatever but but i found that i really like it because it absorbs a lot of the pace um of the ball and at the level i play at now at 5 i mean there are some people that can really rip on the ball yes. so you got to be able to take that pace off um uh, so honestly, I love that about it. It's got the polypropylene core, which is is basically the honeycomb core, uh, which a lot of companies are going to. And then you've got you've got a lot of reach. You've got some length there, but you're not giving up as much as some of the the blade style paddles. And by blade, I mean the longer blade paddle. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the ones on the market go to the fullest extent, and they give up a lot of width where we chose not to go quite as lo- uh, lengthy and get a little little width there so that you could still have a good surface area. Um, also, the sweet spot uh, is a little higher up about where the M is. That stands for Monarch. Um, so it's a little higher than the average paddle. So what that does for me is it gives me a little bit more uh, pop when I'm hitting my serves. I can get a lot of top spin because I kind of roll it off the end of the paddle right there instead of right there instead of in the middle. Mm-hmm. And then obviously when I'm hitting overheads, I try to catch it towards the top and just really unload on that sucker. All right. Yeah, taking a look at some of the statistics here, um, it looks like it's seven and three eighths inch wide, sixteen and three eighths inch long. Uh, the face is fused graphite and fiberglass. It's got the Monarch Polycore, which you talked about. Uh, the thickness is 16.5 millimeters. The weight range is anywhere from 7.7 to 7.9 ounces. Obviously, the elongated paddle shape uh, and the grip. So let's talk about this. It's the Monarch Touch by Gamma. So Gamma is the actual maker of this grip, huh? Well, they, they worked together to create the grip because gamma has a well-known reputation for creating awesome grips in Mm -hmm. the sport of pickleball and so originally when when monarch hit production making their their own uh, grips and so they just subbed it out to gamma because gamma is up in pittsburgh as well um they're they're both up there in that area Mm -hmm. can you guys hear me yeah we can hear Okay, it just froze for just a second on me. Um, so anyway, they were both they're both up there in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Both uh, companies work out of Pittsburgh, so they they subbed it out originally when they first came into the market. Monarch did, but now they created their own grip, and then they I think they just had uh, Gamma actually make it. So they they went with a really nice grip. It's got the little yellow dots. Uh, you can see the underlay of the yellow. Mm-hmm kind of a it's more of a touch thing you know as far as the look aesthetic i like it man i like how the yeah it looks, you know, the, the golden color theme is kind of goes throughout the entire design which is nice yeah very cool design have you guys man, how, ever... how cool is it to uh to have a paddle named after you the, the golden axe i mean yeah. that is badass man <laughs> that's pretty cool yeah guys i mean uh, it, it still seems kind of surreal because two and a half years ago i was um not even in or well, i guess three years ago i was not even in the sport right and two and a half years ago i was going through a divorce and was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And I found pickleball and, and just kind of dove head first into it. And, uh, but I will tell you this, it's, it's documented, it's time stamped, uh, back two and a half years ago, I posted something on the pickleball forum. I, I wrote a comment and said that I was going to find a company that was going to believe in me enough and sponsor me, uh, and help me create my dream, which was a, a paddle of my own. And I, I have that, I have a screenshot of that from two and a half years ago. So it's not, I mean, I kind of still don't know, know how I feel because it, it's, it's going out in the stores now. It's online. It's live now. And it's already, we've already sold uh, a bunch of them actually over the last couple of days. So um, 
it's going to be kind of cool when I start seeing them at tournaments and people playing with them and stuff like that. I've been waiting probably about eight months now, eight, nine months for it to get released. Okay. So, oh man, yeah, I can't imagine how cool that would be to be at a tournament and just to see people that you don't yeah. even know using your signature paddle. Yeah, man, that, would be, that awesome. would be awesome. Yeah, and actually, guys, uh, I was in the Naples Dick Sporting Goods, the Naples, Florida store, uh, yesterday, and their their Golden Axe paddles are in transit right now. They're not going to be there till next week. Uh, but I was looking at their selection. And I will be joining the likes of Kyle Yates and Simone Jardim on the covers of these paddles. So I feel pretty honored to be in that small group right there. Oh yeah, that's so. That's my dicks that you're yeah. talking about. That's that's the that's the place where I go anytime I need to buy any of my sports types of things. And yeah, you they they have a decent selection there. But yep, there you have. Uh, Simone's Prince response right up there. You have Kyle's Bantam TS five. Uh, and now you're going to have the golden ax up there. I love it. Yeah. And, uh, also just so everybody knows anybody watching and, uh, you guys as well, that's the all gold version. So that's eventually going to become a limited edition version. And we're going to come out with some different colors. Uh, I think the next color to come out is going to be black around the axe so it's going to accent the axe a lot more okay. with the black around it but right now that's the only model out officially that's um gold and they'll they'll eventually make that a limited edition so you guys will want me to sign nice. that i'm sure so it'll be yeah. worth at least 25 bucks down the road <laughs> <laughs> i love it man hell yeah and uh I don't know if you were listening earlier, but we were talking about how the the next Eddie versus Webby match is going to be a full court singles match for the Ooh, first time ever. Yeah. And I've always heard that the that the longer paddles, yes. the longer skinnier paddles like this are great for singles. And I don't know about you, Eddie, but I I think I'm going to try using this paddle for that match. I I think I am as well, man. This would be this guys. Would be that would be huge. Can you guys have that down in Florida where Eddie's at, and then I can do the live commentary for that? That would be that would be too much. I'm trying to get Webby down here. Uh, we'll, we'll probably have to do it up in Michigan. I'm going to be up there for work next month, but I don't know, Webby. What what tournaments are you looking at coming down here for? I don't know. I like if I uh, would would we be able to get into the U.S. Open together, or is that too hard to get into? You think? No, because I could possibly we can get in. What do you say? What do you? How about how about we go for the U.S. Open? Let's do the U.S. Open, man. I think that would be obviously it's at the top of my list of tournaments. It's like right there with Beer City Open. So yeah, of course, man. Let's do it. All right. It's uh, I can't I can't say for sure, but that's what that's my my goal is going to be to get down there for the U.S. Open. All right. There you go. Speaking of the uh, big tournaments. TOC's going on right now. I, I heard you guys talking yes. to Lauren. She's actually out there, correct? Mm -hmm. She is. Yep. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, a lot of great matches today. Did you guys see the Waters beat Lindsey Newman and Jesse Irvine in mm -hmm. the gold medal match? Yeah. Yes. Took, took it in two games, man. That was uh whew. that was some good good play though. I mean, unbelievable athleticism out there it's it's crazy to watch them play very very good athleticism on both sides but the waters are just on another level right mm -hmm. now guys they the two of those players together those two together specifically are just dynamite i mean the, their defense their offense they bring relentless pressure at you they never give you a break if you watch just if you just pay attention to them while they're playing, just watch the match. It's it's ridiculous how much pressure they put on these pro players. The mm -hmm. two of them together is is almost just too much for the the opponents that they're facing. Yeah. Um, oh they yeah. They definitely dominated. That's for sure. I mean, all the matches I saw them in today, they they pedaled to the metal the whole time. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys have yeah, noticed that's this. Yeah, kind of their like, mo. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, but I, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but, but a lot of the like when I listen to the commentary, when like the other pro players are doing commentary, I feel like people like they they always point out like how unconventional their their style is and how like people seem to think like you know what they they're they're doing great, but if they keep playing the way they're playing, like they they might not, it might not take them super far, but yet they end up in the finals regularly and even winning gold pretty, pretty regularly too. So, I mean, whatever they're doing is working. <laughs> yeah, guys. And I, I've had conversations with them and I just to be real honest about it, you know, what they're doing is working and they're mm-hmm. changing the landscape of pickleball um, one match at a time. And I, I don't think they're worried one bit about what, the other pros think or what the other pros say, because until you can beat them, until you can prove their style is not uh, a style that's going to be successful. Cause right now they just won a women's gold medal match at the, one of the biggest tournaments in the country, TOC, mm-hmm. um, yeah. their first major. They've also beaten some of the best teams in the country at various different tournaments across the nation uh, over the last you know year. So until somebody proves them wrong, I don't think they're going to change anything. So yeah, they're not worried one bit. Yeah, it's even today I heard, uh, let's see, it was Randy Coleman and Christine Barksdale were doing commentary together. Um, And even Christine was saying like, oh, you know, Anna Lee, after she reset that, she really should have come up a step to the line. But I think Anna Lee was like, no, I'll, I'll play a foot behind because... I'm aggressive right now and I want them to dink that ball and let me just rip it because she's so consistent with that shot and it wins matches. So why would she play any other way? Yeah. Yeah. And also one, one thing that you, one thing that you have to realize is that Lee and Anna Lee are very good. They're very good at moving on the court together. They just move so smooth and what you'll notice is the mom, Lee Waters, plays on the what they call the ad side, the left side, mm-hmm. most time. And or when she's on the left side, Anna Lee will take that step back, and that actually allows her mom the ability to step in and poach a, mm-hmm. a, the ball. Like basically, if the ball gets hung up at all while they're trying to dink to Anna Lee, it's almost like a trap. It's almost a setup because. If you're trying to hit deeper to her feet and bounce that ball right at her feet, that's going to allow Lee, her mom, to step over and poach that ball out of the air. Mm -hmm. And in the gold medal match, I saw her do that several times. So it's kind of a multi-purpose strategy. Yeah, and it works. I wouldn't wouldn't change if I was them. (laughs) I don't know if you guys saw it. Definitely not. I don't know if you... I don't know if you guys saw any of their uh, post-match interviews today, but I, I heard that they credited their success today to being on the Eddie and Webby podcast a couple <laughs> weeks ago. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> I did not hear that. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't either. I didn't either. But I was just I was wondering if you guys did. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Webby, how many beers have you had tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. What, uh, so what else is going on with you, Scott? Anything else uh, new in your world, man? I know you just recently made the move down to Florida. How's that all going? Man, life is good, guys. Life is good. I, I, I envisioned my life being this way, which is teaching pickleball in the morning, playing pickleball in the afternoon, and traveling to pickleball tournaments and playing and commentating in the, on the weekends. Mm-hmm. So my life is all about some pickleball. All right. And uh, are you like in Florida right now? I mean, I know this is like the hottest time of year to uh, to be down there, but how are you feeling down there? Oh, I love Florida overall, but I'm having a hard time adjusting to not just the heat, but also the rain every single day. Mm-hmm. So the this rain every a- day is kind of... yeah. This has been a little bit of a unconventional summer. Um, usually during the rainy season, it just rains for an hour in the afternoon and then it moves on. Right. But man, we've had like all day rainstorms happening and 
it's been it's been weird. Although last week's been a little bit better, but it's definitely been an unusual summer the last couple months. That's for sure. Yeah, I think I brought the unusual with me, maybe <laughs> <Yeah>. from Alabama. <laughs> it's definitely been different, man. Well, you've been down now for what about a month and a half, and uh, still still waiting for us to be able to get a chance to hang out. But I know I know we both been pretty busy with traveling and stuff. So once it slows down, we definitely got to go out and hit some balls. Oh, for sure. And I still might get together with you guys. Uh, I know you invited me out Sunday Mm -hmm. at the new Pickleplex. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope that I can uh, make that. I I, I actually play Friday and Saturday. So I might be able to actually make it back on Sunday. But I'm not sure what time yet. So I'll have to let you know. Okay. Well, let me know, man. So Scott, I've got a question for you. Um, and I, I feel like the, the nation is wondering about this as well. Everybody that's the, the millions of viewers that are tuning in right now. Um, last time you were on the show, you were wearing a new pair of glasses, the, uh, thicker framed glasses. And I see that you are not wearing those glasses now. What's the, what's the story there? What's going on? Well, guys, I have multiple glasses now, actually. So uh, truth be told, these are my kind of relaxing glasses. They're very light, very flexible. And, uh, yeah, I just like to mix it up sometimes, guys. Keep you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. It's a good answer. I like it. <laughs> well, nice. Man. Nice. Are but... you guys hearing me okay? A, a little delay, yeah. and I wasn't sure if you guys can hear me fine. Yeah. It's yeah, little... there's a little bit of a delay, but uh, we can we can hear you nice and clear. So. All is good. Okay, great. I just wanted to make sure, guys. I didn't want it to be uh, jumbled up. <laughs> no worries at all, man. It sounds good. Um, so, uh, Scott, I don't know if you – you probably can't see the messages as they come up on the screen because I know you're on the road, but uh, Stephanie left a message and said, Scott, we'll just have to come to Michigan to commentate. What do you think about that? for uh, when we do the Eddie versus Webby match because uh, we're definitely going to have to try and make that happen when, when Eddie's in town in September because we, we never know when we're going to be physically together in person, so we always try to make the Eddie versus Webby matches happen when we are. So is that is that even a possibility, or you got too much going on right now for a trip to Michigan in September, a random trip? <laughs> you tell Stephanie if she'll book that flight for me, I'll be there in a heartbeat. <laughs> All right, Stephanie, get on that. Let's make it happen. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> love it, love it. Hey, by the way, my earpiece right here is uh, Bluetooth. Mm-hmm. I was listening to music and video and stuff while I was flying all day. Uh, it just said low battery, so if it dies, I'm not. I, I think I'll still be able to talk um, through the phone. I just it might change just slightly, but we got gotcha. Uh, no worries, man. Well, actually, this is probably uh, pretty close to wrapping up time anyway. So definitely wanted to give you an opportunity to be able to talk about anything else going on. Or actually, why don't we start with, I know you said that it's uh, the Dick's location in Naples that uh, this paddle is going to be available for sale there. But where else can people order the Golden Axe right now? So we're running a special right now, a promotion through Sunday at midnight if you go on to the website dicksportinggoods.com and order the golden axe by sunday you'll and use the discount code at checkout it's golden boy all caps all one word golden boy at the checkout then you'll get chin off the paddle which will down to i think a hundred dollars even and then it'll be um Free shipping, so you can get it for 106 plus free shipping through Sunday, um, and then I believe it's still free shipping after the promotion. I think anything over 100 bucks at Dick Sporting Goods, um, you get free shipping. So nice. So check that out. So you said coupon code Golden Boy at checkout. That'll get them that discount. Yep, Golden Boy, all caps, all one word. 
And uh, also, it's coming out in stores in about 150 stores across the nation. Um, and when I say stores, I, I mean exclusively at Dick Sporting Goods stores across the nation. Um, a ton of Florida stores, um, probably a lot of Michigan stores, Utah, Arizona. Um, I know I, I, ch I checked the list. I got the list. I'll send it to you guys. Um, stores all across the nation, and we're going to see how well it does. So even if you don't use it, uh, maybe buy it and then save it for when you see me and I'll sign it for you and you can just hang it on the wall or something. But, uh, the more paddles, the more golden ax paddles we sell, the more stores it'll go in. So that'll just be helping the cause. <laughs> All right, man. Nice. And, uh, anybody that's tuning in on Facebook, I added a comment to the comment section, um, with the information that Scott said. So it's this discount code golden boy, go to DickSportingGoods.com in order by Sunday for a 10% off discount and free shipping. Yeah, also, I w I'm going to be doing a giveaway. And part of the giveaway is going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to send out the list to everybody, uh, the nation. And I want people to go to their local Dick Sporting Goods stores next week and take a selfie with the golden axe on the shelf. So you got to take a selfie and then tag me on Facebook to be eligible for the giveaway. And then I'm going to randomly se select a winner. Um, but I want to see how many people will take a selfie with the golden axe in stores. I like it. Nice. Yeah. And I will, you can, you can count on the fact that I will do that as soon as I see the, uh, the Dick Sporting Goods in Canton, Michigan, as, as soon as I see them carrying it, I will absolutely take the selfie and send it to you. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, put it on Facebook and tag me, and uh, that'll be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I've already gotten one in Overland Park, Kansas. It's, it's actually reached the shelves there, and that was Mickey Collins. He sent me a, a selfie with the paddle in the background right there, so... I know it's actually in stores or some of the stores already. Some of them are still in trans uh, transit and will be there next week. So I know I talked to the Naples manager and he said that uh, they should be in stores by next week for sure. So. All right. Well, I guess I know where I'm going uh, next week, taking my selfie <laughs> with the golden ax. Nice. This one. Absolutely. This one and if, so. <laughs> and if you just want to take that one in there, early and just put it on the shelf and take a, a selfie picture that'd be fine too <laughs> walk in there and be like all right i'm i'm not stealing this i'm bringing this in with me i promise so that'd be funny yeah you need to have them give you one of those stickers when you walk in the right. door so they know you didn't steal it <laughs> off the shelf <laughs> oh. well good stuff man well scott thanks for uh thanks for sending these i'm looking forward to trying it out when i play this weekend um i'm liking it though feels good everything that's yeah it does like feel good very solid paddle which i'm excited to try it so yeah and this is the first of the awesome, uh, guys yeah of the longer of the longer skinnier blades here i've never uh this is my first one of this style so i'm looking forward to using it on the court i might get a chance to play early tomorrow morning um so i'll let you know how that goes yeah awesome and uh if you if you guys don't play with it right out of the gate uh just lie to me and tell me you did no i'm just kidding no if you if you takes usually a new paddle that you start using it it usually takes about three to four weeks to get comfortable with it um at least for me it does and i've talked to other people that's pretty pretty common uh, when you switch to a completely different style because that's that's a blade paddle mm -hmm. yeah Definitely looking forward to checking it out. It's very nice. In a All right, guys, Tony my, just my left a message. My headphone died. Oh, okay. My we can, we can died, still hear so you. I guess we'll wrap it up because I can't hear you guys. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right, man. Good to talk to you, Scott. We'll be in touch, man. Yeah. Take it easy, Scott. Thanks All for right, joining guys. us tonight. And we'll again, thanks for later. the. Thanks for the golden axe. Definitely looking yeah. forward to trying that out. And I'm looking forward to uh, finally defeating Eddie in an <laughs> Eddie versus Webby match with the golden axe. Bring it on. Thanks, man. See ya. All right.
Well, nice. Yeah, man. I I'm really excited to to try this paddle out. Like you mentioned, I have not tried any of the blade style paddles before. Um, like I said, this one really definitely feels good in the hand. Now, one thing I'll tell yeah. you is that um, the most recent, uh, what was it? The uh, the U.S. Open edition of the Tempest Pro that I have has the long handle on it, uh, and this one is the the shorter handle. And I've definitely gotten used to that long handle, so I think it's going to take me a little bit to to get used to the shorter again, like I had on the Bantam EXL. But I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll try it tomorrow morning. We'll see. Yeah, I I think I will try it tomorrow morning, and I'm I'm in the same boat as you because I I recently switched over to the uh, the uh, Tempest Pro. I've been loving that paddle, and it, it it has the longer handle, and it definitely felt strange to me at first, but now I'm I'm very used to it, and I really like that style. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this feels actually on the pickleball court, but I'm looking forward to it. And I've always heard that this style is great for singles, so I I mm-hmm. definitely plan on getting used to this and I, I do want to use this when we do our, our full court singles match. Sounds good. Oh, well, anything else you want to talk about tonight? Cause it is literally way past my bedtime. <laughs> no, I think it's a good time to wrap it up. Cause yeah, I, like I said, I'm going to try playing early in the morning tomorrow before I start working. So I need to get some rest. I need to get some beauty sleep. That's right. You need all the beauty sleep you can get. Ha <laughs> ha Oh. Oh, man. Oh. Snap. Got him. Got him. Snap, crackle, and pop. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was Dinking Around with Eddie and Webby, which followed podcast number 49. And one thing yes. we didn't talk about was, I know we talked about how we're at 49 and one more beyond 49 is 50 and 50 is a big number and we're super excited about that but yeah um we have a pretty pretty amazing guest that's going to be coming up for episode 50 wouldn't you agree oh man yes a very amazing guest um i think uh it's a a, a very fitting guest for our milestone 50th episode i i couldn't be more excited yeah. uh it, it's gonna be awesome you're you are not gonna want to miss next week the Eddie and Webby 50th podcast extravaganza. That's right. Definitely, definitely want to check that out. It's going to be good. I'm really excited for it. And 50 is a huge milestone. Definitely uh, yeah, man. not expect it to go this <laughs> far. And <laughs> no. here we are. No, yeah, I think early on we joked around about, uh, like, I think episode five, we were like, episode five on our way to episode 50 or something like that. And, uh, yeah, that's that seemed like a very unrealistic number. Never thought we'd get there, and we're we're already just about there. It's crazy. That's right. Um, well, guys, that was dinking around with Eddie and Webby, and hope you guys enjoyed it. I know we definitely did. Podcast forty nine was a lot of fun. Having Lauren on was great. Uh, and anything else you want to share, Webby? No, I think that's it for today. Well, on that note, I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. See ya.